There's no reason, nothing to protect. Let's go. Thank you, God. Yep. As you could tell, that uh, interview taped moments before the teams come back out, came back out on the floor, and immediately a kill for number two, the National Freshman of the Year, Catherine Plummer, who was pretty quiet so far. Seven kills, now make it eight, but six errors, and here is Fitzmorris back at the line. And so far, Minnesota speed versus Stanford size, the win to Stanford. You can't coach tall. No, you can't, but what you can coach is what Sarah Wilhite just did there. Hit a higher shot that takes the block of Jenna Gray right out of it by hitting deep toward the corner. Wilhite now with 14 kills, but it's taken her 41 swings to get there. More numbers for the first two sets in just a moment. And Ajanaku is stuffed. Inky Ajanaku, 10 of 16, now 10 of 17. Getting back to Minnesota, hit 137. They were the best in the Big Ten Conference at 293 in terms of offensive efficiency through two sets. That's the lowest number Minnesota has been held to all season long, including minus 024 in that second set. The Stanford block giving them all kinds of trouble. Minus sounds like the temperature here in Columbus. It has been, it has been an icebox the last couple of days. Stay in the skywalk. Yeah, Minnesota might be used to it, but I don't know about the Cardinal and about the Stanford Cardinal. They haven't been home. They went straight from the Wisconsin Regional right here to Columbus, Ohio. So they've been on the road now for eight days. That ball missed out of bounds by Will Height. Adjustments for Hugh McCutcheon and Minnesota. You you pointed out that they stayed in the same rotational position. Were you surprised by that? I thought they might try to change some different things and get a different hitter on Moretta Lutz, for example. Maybe put uh, Sarah Wilhite against her more instead of Alexis Hart. Good touch by India John. You can choose where to start your team. Any one of those six players on the floor can make you can make your first serve. If you change it up, you get different matchups at the net, but both coaches sticking with their original plan. Just underway here in the third set. Thanks so much for joining us here at the first of two national semifinals. Next up, as you saw at the intermission, will be between Texas and Nebraska, a rematch of last year's national championship contest when Nebraska won the title three sets to none. Plummer will go back to serve. Well, you also asked about Minnesota changes. They talked about how it got away from them last year, so they've been working this whole season on building the skills to change their fate and make a new story in this match. I'm sure they talked about that a lot in the locker room. And they've won five five-set matches in this season. They're absolutely capable of coming back. You play in the Big Ten or in the Pac-12, you're going to be used to battling for a long time, and you're going to be used to losing some sets because each of those conferences, clearly the best two in the country, are absolutely loaded. Each of them put eight teams into the NCAA tournament this year. Better passing to start out this third set. Alexis Hart has been so very good. Now eight kills on 20 swings. A very good start for Hart, but she, like the rest of her Minnesota teammates, really dropped in that second set. Stanford leading 5-4. Katie Shaw, 5'8", senior out of Michigan, on to serve. Janaku with a little fister against two blockers out of the middle. That's twice now that Jenna Gray has set her in her armpit, and still, <laughs> Janaku is so good, she's adjusted and figured out a way to navigate around a two-person block that is focusing a lot of attention on her. If you set her at the right height, she's going to block right over. over. Right, up, right. Much like one of your Olympians, Faluka Akinradawo, when she was at Stanford or at the Olympic level, it doesn't matter who's up if the connection is there. Two up, three up. In the old, old five. days, you could have five or six up. <laughs> even, <laughs> I didn't, even I didn't play in that yeah. era. Loretta <laughs> Lutz. Oh, boy, that, that ball's down. Good work by the second referee, Bill Stanley. Devani McFarty is the first referee, and that ball to the floor, and after a very slow start by Moretta Lutz, remember, she was just one for eight. She has really picked things up offensively. Lutz now with six kills on 14 swings. Oh, what a rip in 
side of Fitzmorris. Will Height, number eight in white, with an absolute cross court crush. To beat Fitzmorris, number one, as the blocker, and then to beat Morgan Hintz as the defensive player with the white jersey on, you've done your job well. Eris Rosado. Minnesota's been working on Plummer all night long, and that ball tattooed right on the sideline by Ivana Vanyak, the 6'4 redshirt junior out of Germany. Yeah, you and I both were thinking she takes better swings on the right side of the court behind the setter. She does. Than some of those sets, <laughs> than some of the swings she takes on the left, but she's helping her team. Last year had to play middle. This year playing outside hitter up back on the left. And a rare ace on Sarah Wilhite forcing the Minnesota timeout. Quick early timeout, good play off the bench that time by Holland McKenna. So a timeout called by Hugh McCutcheon and Stanford and will step aside. Minnesota, the number two overall seed in real trouble against Inky and the Inkets, trailing two sets to none and 9-6 here in the third. a better pass to run the speed and it leads to far more easy kills like the Sarah Wilhite swing there. Did you see that big blob of red in the middle on the Stanford yeah. side? The <laughs> big blob of red is good. It sure <laughs> is. And the more distributed those dots are, the means the more setters are running around. Let's see where Jenna Gray gets to run her offense from in this one. That's a perfect pass. She didn't have to move at all. Mistake. She had the offense that she wanted, but a mistake by Catherine Plummer trying to hit the line and hitting it into the antenna. Plummer's been playing the total game, having to receive a lot of serves, blocking well like the rest of her Stanford teammates, but now just hitting 074, nine kills, 27 swings, but seven errors. Good, tough serve. That's the trouble pass that Minnesota needs to score more points. Minnesota a chance to tie, and another kill by Wilhite into the cross court. So immediately coming out of the timeout, Stanford having a lot of service pressure putting on them. Yeah, Selliger Swenson does a nice job at the line. One of the last two serves has caused trouble for Stanford. Let's see if she can do it again. Good pass by Stanford, but a stuff by Wilhite. You can see that coming on Fitzmorris. A 4 nothing run by Minnesota coming out of the timeout. Remember, they trailed 9-6. Just moments ago, and John Dunning will have to counter with his first time out. So you knew Minnesota was not going to go quietly. In the semifinals last year before losing to Texas, trailing Stanford two sets to none. So here come the Golden Gophers. Go on the sideline, Stanford up two sets to none. Here comes Minnesota on a 4 nothing run, and Fitzmorris misses that ball out of bounds. Stanford looking for a touch. Let's go over to Holly. Inky Jonak, who the Stanford leader, took over in the first part of that huddle. She thinks this team is getting a little bit nervous, a little bit tight right now. She said, I want you guys to look everybody in the eyes and calm down. Then John Dunning got into the huddle. He said, I want deep breaths, everybody. We just need to play point by point and calm down. Deep breaths, deep breaths. I think that's good for us too, guys, right? Deep breaths, Paul, Parch. I'm in breathing. In and out, in and out. Easier from over here. <laughs> and it was key last weekend in, yeah. in an electric number of regionals and regional semifinal matches that had people all over the volleyball world really excited about the college game in this particular NCAA tournament. Nearly 50,000 people on hand over the weekend for those regional championships. Net violation called against Stanford and Plummer. With a new change this year with the hosted regional format in years past, it's been pre-assigned regionals. Everybody knew the locations, but this time the top remaining seeds in those four regionals would get to host, and that led to some very energized home crowds. That ball over the top, Rosado there with a pancake, but a double or a lift is called against Loman. Stanford was the only road team really to come through. Otherwise, Texas won at home, Minnesota won at home.
Wisconsin losing and Nebraska protecting home court as well. But Texas and Nebraska <laughs> were, were one point away from not holding that home court advantage, which is a good sign for the state of the game and the competitiveness. Wilhite kind of going off speed, conservative swing, and the net ball turned out of bounds by Lutz. As far as Stanford is concerned, first couple of rounds at home, the Denver, Boise State, Florida State, and then came back from two sets down to beat Wisconsin, three sets to two, to Minnesota's road to the semifinal after this point. Here's Paige Tapp, number four in white serving. Good deep serve, maybe out of bounds. Rare to see Minnesota miss time so many plays in their offense. Off the top of the block, six foot eight. Loretta Lutz, a very smart swing for the Golden Gophers. Three sets to none victories over North Dakota, then Hawaii, Missouri in the regional semifinals, and then three sets to none at home over a very good team from UCLA. Stanford back within one, and they really needed that kill from Lutz. Jonaku got taken out of the play and one on one and a rip off the left side by Martin. This is the beauty. When that offense of Minnesota is run properly, it looks the same. This set looks like it's going to the quick hitter. Hinky Ajanaku gets hung up in what we call the popcorn machine. By the time he, she hits the ground, it's a one on one swing. Great put away and really well run by Samantha Seliger Swenson, the setter for Minnesota. Hard tipping over the top, read by Plummer, but it's going to be a free ball for Minnesota. What a good close by Moretta Lutz. The window was open for a moment and then shutting it down. You're right. You and I are looking at that and we're thinking, oh my gosh, she's going to crush that. And then Lutz just dives in. I like it when blockers take a chance like that once in a while and don't always do the same thing. Keep the hitter guessing. Play by Seliger Swenson, the setter number 11 for Minnesota to keep that ball alive. Timing off again. We'll hide out of the back row. Funyak with that very unusual inside out approach, able to put that ball away and ripped it inside the block. You are right. That's so difficult for her to hit. It's coming almost directly over her head, and she still sees the hole in the block somehow. Threads the needle. Five Vanya. kills now out yeah. of 16 swings. Having a pretty efficient match so far as Ivana Vanyak, who struggled last week at Wisconsin, just 9 of 35. Unforced error here. And now Stanford on top, 15-14. Yeah, Vanyak for the season, only 167, but having a, a very strong match for Stanford. Another chance to score on a poor pass. Big momentum swing here for Moretta Lutz and missed it out of bounds. Remember that play. That was a chance for Stanford to take the 16-14 advantage. Both teams have one timeout remaining. Tied at 15. Remember, best three out of five sets. First four sets to 25 points must win by two. And here's Alyssa Gaynor, 5'11", junior, out of Lakeville, Minnesota, back to serve, play some defense. Both teams making use of some of those 15 substitutions. Nice. Uh... Will Height dragged inside. Minnesota's got to go right. Minnesota, maybe, boy, the ball didn't clear. Stanford had some opportunities, but just could not get a clean first contact. Gainer again, Minnesota leading 16-15. And Lutz misses it out of bounds. Some big errors now for Karch here in the third. Hitting errors for Stanford Karch in the third. Yeah, Lutz can go with her height right over the block. And I think she's just trying to make too great a shot by hitting the ball right at the end line or sideline. Can Stanford get through these rotations when Ajanaku is on the sideline as a middle blocker being replaced by the Libero? Great touch by Seliger Swenson. 
to create the scoring opportunity at the net with her block and then running the offense in transition. I thought so. Minnesota now leading 18-15 on a 4 nothing run. Yeah, great touch by Swenson, and then they get to run that speed, and only one blocker really in front of the hitter, Will Hype. My finals and eight out of the last nine seasons. He told us yesterday that when he got to Austin, Texas, he wanted to be Nebraska. Well, with those kind of numbers, he is. Good job by Coach Elliott. Can't get any more consistent than that. Eight out of the last nine semifinal appearances. But only one championship during all of those tournament matches. Texas won the national championship back in 1988 in Minneapolis. And then in 2012 over the University of Oregon. That ball hit out of bounds. Is Stanford not serving as tough in the third, or has Minnesota straightened out some of its receiving problems? I think it's a little of both, and Seliger Swenson is locating the ball better for her hitters. Another block. It's been a little while, and what a blocking performance by number one, Jenna Gray. Six foot one setter, and now 13 blocks for Stanford, and Jenna Gray doing a great job with Inky Ajanaku leading the way. And so Minnesota, both teams utilizing their timeouts. 3 nothing run for Stanford coming out of the break. Mentioned Stanford with 13. Minnesota with only six stuff. Stanford, the best blocking team statistically in the country. Bowl season officially kicks off this coming Saturday at 12... PM Eastern Time on ABC, the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl. North Carolina Central taking on Grambling. Two on ESPN, the Guild in New Mexico Bowl, New Mexico and UTSA. Then at 3.30 on ABC, the Las Vegas Bowl presented by Geico Houston versus San Diego State. The most wonderful time of year begins this Saturday on ESPN at noon. Let's go over to Holly. Well, you think about the pressure of this match for Stanford right now, trying to win a national championship. Well, this is nothing compared to the pressure this team is under for finals right now. The players have all taken finals here. They actually got here to Columbus uh, Sunday morning very early so they could be here in time for their students to take finals. There's a rule at Stanford that they have to take the final the same time their class back in California is taking the final. Inky Ajanaku, for example, the best player on this team, the three finals she's taken this week, cellular immunology, clinical anatomy, and bioinformatics. Um, I, I don't even know how to tell you that she's just smarter than we are. <laughs> what, what's bioinformatics, Hal? What, what is that? <laughs> I'm not sure I could spell it if you didn't put the graphic up. Coming out of the timeout. Kelsey Humphrey looking over to the sideline. The coaches will give the server the area of the court they want to attack. Will Hyde again. What a dig by Morgan Hintz. Stanford again on a 3 0 run. Back to Will Hyde again. And through the block and down. Minnesota in a must win situation, trailing two sets to none. And Coach McCutcheon has been asking starting last spring, really, a ton of Sarah Wilhite to play a more consistent brand of volleyball and a more all-around brand of volleyball so they can leave her on the court the whole time and lead this team better. Oh, up into the block. That might have been covered that time by Humphreys, but give the stuff block the seventh for Minnesota as they go back on top. Look, two really high-quality teams. Are you surprised by how many scoring runs there have been? I am not. That You know, Good teams can get on rolls, and there's not so much of a thing of momentum. It's just that they're going to make good plays, and you can make them in bunches. And you've seen both teams respond nicely. Down, call a timeout, they come storming right back. That's the sign of teams that can turn it around. Just the second service error for Minnesota, four for Stanford. Will Heights getting a lot of action and slicing away inside the 10-foot line. Yeah, the Libra of Morgan Hintz was trying to read that watcher, and just in your screen there, she's trying to, to cheat up, but you can't get, you got to cheat almost under the net to make the play on that very that, sharp angle. That one almost clipped Catherine Plummer in the head. She rips over the top. A touch called by the lines person. 
remember, we have not had a challenge yet, and we're going to have one right now. I thought so. There is the first challenge. Again, three challenges allowed per team per match. Ball in and out. Did an attack touch the block, or did it not? Did it touch a defender, or did it not? And Hugh McCutcheon is going to use the first of his three. And just like Nebraska last week when they were down 2-0, was trying to do anything they could to extend. Oh, that's a touch right off the right thumb. Just as Nebraska wanted to great view on those replays, Nebraska wanted to extend the, the match beyond three sets. And so this is wise, I think, by Coach McCutcheon to try to win this point. They're at 20 all or 21-20 in this to make it go at least four. See, with a super slow motion, and the touch is confirmed. So now Minnesota has two challenges remaining. Give Kaffler and Plummer the kill, Stanford the point. And Minnesota still leading 21-20. Stanford playing Minnesota for the eighth time, the third in this in the NCAA tournament. And of course, Ajanaku checks in. Stanford, a perfect 7-0. Ajanaku, as you point out, very importantly, guards back in the front court. What a play on the joust by Jenna Gray. She has been huge at the net so far for Stanford. And you don't have to be tall to win those, but you have to time it right. Stanford pulls into a tie. So Ijanaku now is in the middle front. Make it the left front. Excuse me, Karch. Can Stanford make a run with their best player, the three-time All-American up front? That's not going to help. The tip was covered, but a net violation. Easy to call. Jenna Gray went fishing and got caught up in the net. And you can see Ajanaku laughing it off, looking at her teammates, trying to give them some strong eyes. And she talked about how when she sees a certain look in her freshman, in their eyes, she knows they can take care of it. Shank pass by Plummer. That ball kept alive and legally played. And Alexis Hart with Stanford's defense scrambling and also parts with a Shank pass. Ajanaku is out of the offense. Wow, what hustle by Jenna Gray, the setter, keeping it alive. And then Humphreys getting it back over the net, but they just couldn't get back into their proper defensive positions. What a so big service error. Remember that one in Minnesota, the only team I've ever seen, capital E, capital V, capital E, capital R, with more aces than errors. You just never see that. Very rare. Look at the lineup. Six foot six, Plummer. Six foot eight, Lutz. And a Jonaku in the middle. Oh, I think he's on a six three. What's the big deal? Coming out to Hart. Huge swing here for Plummer. What a cover by Lutz. A Jonaku again. Ball set too low. She goes back to a Jonathan higher. No. Stanford gets some fortunate bounces here, but not the fourth time around. A clutch block by Minnesota. Set points now for Alexis Hart, Molly Loman, and Minnesota. Remember, they came back from two sets down against Nebraska a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and Ajanaku misses it. No. Wow, that was going to be out of bounds. Will Hyde dug it. Ajanaku with a slam dink. Nice cover.
The Stanford Cardinal up two sets to none, and a lot of Golden Gopher fans made the trip. You knew after last year's frustrations, the Golden Gophers were going to dig in and come firing back. They did exactly that, but they still trailed two sets to one.